Um, hi, today I wanted to share with you guys some of the vintage um, camera collection I have and which one of my really, really favorites because I've not been just collecting these but actually I've been trying to use these um, beautiful cameras. Um, I've actually started um, shooting a lot on these because I just I just feel that what, what digital can do is film content, what film can do and digital content specifically, especially these cameras. Um, so what I'm what I'm holding in my hand is one of the one of the really old cameras by Agfa. This is, this actually comes from um, 1950s, where like they used to make these cameras really really like tough and it was like a solid metal and these are quite heavy and what I like about it it's like it's a very well designed camera it's made in Germany and and uh, in my opinion like most of the good cameras were from Germany and back in the days I mean later on then there were cameras like Hasselblad uh, came in the way like it's it's like really sophisticated in terms of um, the way the camera operates the way the shutter is released and where it is and um, these are just different focus and aperture rings here um, there's this like a series of this kind of models and I have like I own like a couple of them um, this is like one of the one of the Baldina it's one of the really famous models where you actually can um, pop out the lens and and then use it and you can actually shoot it with closed lens but actually what happens is the way you use the aperture from here is gets a bit a little tougher um, these cameras are like quite quite friendly like there's not much in there this is really nice way to do focus these cameras are range finders um, they have their own like they're their own type um, in this range, I have a really beautiful camera that I actually ruined a little bit because when I bought it, it was like really in a good condition. But then I had to, um, while I was traveling, I had to keep it with other cameras and it just got damaged a little bit. This is one of the most um, collectibles. Um, this camera is called Zweiz Icon. And it's one of its kind. You open the lens like that. It's really beautiful. Um, I've shot a lot with it. it. It gives you a really nice grainy. <laughs> I mean, the pictures look like they're from World War II. Um, I'll show you how the shutter works. It's basically these rings here. When, once they're loaded with, uh, with of course, um, the film. The shutter works from actually bringing this down. And you can see how it works. It's really, really nice. Um, you can close it back. Interesting thing about it: you load your films and you know unwind them from one of these wheels. Um, so these these are like some of the really nice rangefinder cameras that come from like 40s and 30s and 50s uh, most of them are Gen German made it's a friend of mine who gave me this camera it's, um, I, I'm extremely in love with it it's um, Waglander it's also one of the really famous cameras from um, 1950s it's a Wetomatic 2 which is like it's got a little bit like a exposure needle here that does the exposure. Um, it's it's quite a heavy camera, really well designed. I have put a film in this last night, and I'm planning to shoot a couple of pictures this week. Um, but it's really really beautiful camera the way it's been designed. Oops, yeah, it's not very friendly systems. Uh, there's one camera when I had like really a lot of passion for cameras. There's one camera that I wanted to buy, and it's actually the uh, Tnex. I wanted to buy a Tnex too, but I couldn't find one. Uh, but then there was one person who was 
selling TNX. The good thing about TNX is these are pretty much semi-automatic cameras and all you have is different settings where you if you if you put them like you have set defaults such as portrait or you know family portrait outdoors indoors you could actually set it up and then kind of shoot with it um, I kind of like how the shutter works from here it's kind of really really nice I have used a film in it but it's kind of a bit tough of a camera to focus um, but it's really pretty good looking nice piece of camera I'm sure you know all about Kodak um, Kodak used to make really bad cameras actually uh, this is one of the cameras which is very famous model called Pony 135 but it, it I've tried to use it it's really bad it's hard to control it's hard to use it's, it's got really bad I don't know it's I, it's find this one camera really trash it's also probably it's made in Japan so it's like not good quality um, in the range finders um, Mamiya used to make some of the Kominar lenses before um, for cameras like Tower 10B I don't know if you can see Tower 10B cameras were really famous with a uh, exposure meter um, this one this one was they were like while Germans were making really good quality cameras Japan was trying to make similar builds but of course there's no comparison in terms of the quality uh, is concerned um, as you know that a lot of Japanese cameras one of the famous cameras um, I'm just gonna pick them up one of the really famous cameras such as my Nolta. Um, these cameras are like your typical new age um, rangefinder cameras with batteries and, and they were like semi-automatic. Um, still works quite well. Nice but I'm not a big fan. I used these cameras but I was really not happy with, with but they were like famous in their times and the way they were um, again another camera such as Yashica Electro 35 later on became quite famous and this is actually a wonderful camera my grandfather used to have one and it works really really well really beautiful body again this is Japanese is one of the Jap good Japanese uh, models. I've been saving this. I don't really shoot much with it because I think it's it has a history of its own. I want to keep it the way it is. It comes with a nice case. Um, long long time ago, there were also the Kodak was also making cameras such as Instamatic, and these are thirty five millimeter cameras with um, with a really interesting small design. This is like your today's pocket camera. Um, but then again, these were hard to focus and you have to follow a range to focus in terms of distance, like where you have to focus it. So these, these can't be used nowadays because they're not very friendly in terms of the usage. Um, now comes, uh, comes my, uh, one of the very favorite, uh, camera, which is, uh, Canon AE-1. I've shot a lot with this camera. A lot of black and white photography. It's one of the best. This is a 50, it comes with a 50 millimeter lens. This camera was actually broken, but I had fixed it, and it just works really well. It's a beautiful, beautiful lens. 1.4 aperture, glass quality is just incredible. Um, Everything is just perfect in this camera. I'm actually gonna load another film tomorrow from Ilford start to shoot a bit more on this um, the next series of cameras which is a completely new generation it's it's called the TLR cameras and this is something that I'm just extremely crazy about so the first TLR camera was I found a TLR camera in my grandfather's uh, house and after that I just used it and I just fell in love with it so um, I bought my first um, TLR camera. This is a 
Yashika, as you can see. Um, these are really, really, this is a 124G, and, and it's really beautiful condition, um, as you can see. As you can see, a little bit of me in it because it shows you the reflection from the mirror. But you see a live view, and this is the focus, how the focus ranges work. Um, it comes with, of course, uh, points to focus more. These cameras are like really nice, um, the way they operate and the way the shutter works. The aperture settings are from here. You always look from the top um, to see the settings which come out somewhere here. Um, then back home I visited my city Hyderabad and I found a uh, really old uh, Chinese seagull camera which I haven't used because I think it seems to be there's some problem in loading the film but I would really like to fix this and see if I could actually start to you know use this camera um, shooting a lot on these cameras there's some of the newer models which were uh, a cross between a Lomo and a TLR and this is one of the cameras, a very lightweight camera, uh, not very heavy. Um, again, it's a, it's a very famous model called Lubitel 2. Um, very friendly to load films, very easy, very lightweight to carry with you. Very sharp actually, but um, less depth of field. Um, not a very great lens, but it, it's all right. Not a great camera. Um, and I, while shooting on these two, one of my most favorite cameras, which I use like pretty much every day. I mean, wherever I go, is one of the very beautiful camera I have. It's a it's a Mamiya C two twenty. I was looking for a Mamiya C three thirty, but I really couldn't find. The 330 camera so I bought I found this from a very old shop um, I was lucky to get it this is the focus range most of the 6x6 photographs that I've taken on my site are actually shot by this and I still use it it's just it's just wonderful to handle and the way it works and the wonderful to um, operate it's very easy you, you you set up your shutter through these points and then there's an aperture and then you just this is your shutter release you just bring it down and then you just shoot with this uh which is of course right now it's there's no foam but i can show you on a multi you just release the shutter and it just works um this is a um, Japanese Mamiya, which is nowadays a phase one. If you buy a phase one camera, it's actually a Mamiya from the old days. Um, this camera is actually from... Oh shit, there's a film in it. I think I just ruined it. Uh, just ruined probably one one film, but... Um, these cameras are brilliant. They, they, they take like 120 millimeter... Um, 120 mm film but they have like 12 to 13 photos that you can get and these are 6 by 6 square format Instagram if you look at the app is actually inspired by the 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 quality and effect and the size of actually these cameras as it comes from long way down there um, in all of these cameras comes the most top collectible that I've ever had is actually a Roliflex. Um, this is the most gorgeous thing ever, uh, with a beautiful, beautiful lens. As you can see, it's a 2.8, 2.8 Plana lens um, called Zeiss, and it's a true, real Roliflex. Back in the day, was a legend and still is. And I found this camera in, in Milan actually this time and somebody was selling it quite expensive but 
I couldn't resist to just get it and you know keep it with me. Um, incredible results, amazing depth of field. Um, a little hard to operate than than a C220 Mamiya because this is probably a slightly an older camera. Then there was like a large format and a medium format format, and this is one of the uh, cameras I have is a this is a Mamiya 645. Um, it's um it's it's actually a little bigger format in terms of the film. It's, still takes 120 but it I think shoots um, um, 6 six by 4 or 5 by 4 I forgot what it is but it, that's the kind of size um, it shoots it's a really hardcore camera um, you load the film and you shoot from here you can lock your you can lock your shutter or from here this is nice to actually shoot through the viewfinder this is the compartment where you load your film and you put it back again, call it, close it, and you're ready to go. Um, the other good thing about this camera is actually you could simply take out the top compartment and shoot like any other TLR or a Rolleiflex camera by looking through as you can see that you can see the view. From there, so you could actually shoot by looking through this camera, and it's wonderful to focus with these cameras because they are really beautiful. Um, I'm just gonna put this back because it's it's one of my really nice cameras. Um, they're hardcore; they like a bit heavy, you know, hard to shoot. Comes with a strap. If you get tired holding it, so you could use it. Now I'm gonna show you a little bit about um, some of the Polaroid cameras. Um, this is like one of the like later second or third generation cameras. It is like a flash place. Here. It's like really stupid camera. Like I, I bought it for a friend of mine, and I think he, he didn't like it so. I just kept it with me. These are, this is a pure Polaroid, but it's terrible. Um, then came better cameras such as the the one step Polaroid cameras. I mean, you put a flash on top, which I don't have right now, and they were like very classic models. You just put the phone and it shoots, such as like that, and keep it down, and it develops. Um, as you can see, I just shot one film for you to show you how to actually, oh my god, it doesn't go down. Um, okay, it's fine. Oh, yeah, it worked. Okay. So, these are like later stages. Then, Polaroid developed further models and created, uh, bolts and flash cameras. I think there's already a film in this one too. As you can see, oh no, there was no film, it was just uh, shut and load. Um, these were like one step close cameras, you had like a couple of options as how far you are, how dark it could it be. This is a very good Polaroid camera, I use it often in my shoots for the, for the backstage. Um, and then last um, camera, which is a Polaroid. Spectra 2, which is one of the really best cameras um, shooting Polaroid, and these are really nice. This is how it opens, it's got a nice flash, nice lens, very easy to use. Uh, it's It's got a slightly bigger bigger size of the Polaroid that it generates, but it's one of the best cameras I've used in terms of the quality of the images. So um, that's it so far. This was like kind of give you an idea about like about 23 or 24 vintage cameras that I have now, but I'm collecting more. But my love has now 
gone more into TLR cameras and I think one of the best cameras I've used so far in terms of the in terms of handling color and film is actually a TLR camera. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed.